everyone, if you guys are this is going to be a uh, channel swap video. Um, and Kage of the Sand One wanted me to promote his um, account on my account, so he asked me to do a video to put on his account of what I do. So I figured I would go ahead and you know show you what I do by doing a deck profile because that's what he did. So I want to kind of go along the same lines. Um, this is going to be a deck profile of my um, gadget deck for nationals that I'm building right now. Um, currently, um, this build of it is 32 and 4. Um, 32 wins, 4 losses. And that's against a very wide range of decks. So I'm going to go ahead and show you, some, show you the uh, main deck and the side deck of it. And you guys can go ahead and enjoy. Um, I basically do... I try and do mostly tech videos and a lot of stuff with gadgets. I'm a, uh, hence the name, the Gadget Guru. I, 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 the gadgets are my favorite cards. So to start off the deck, two yellow, two red, and two green. Um, standard six set of gadget, just advantage pretty much. Summon, get some pluses, and do some damage. That's what they're there for. Next, three banish for the Radiance with all the Grave dependents in this format. This card is a Wrecking Ball. There's a lot of decks you can summon him right now, and this is Game Over Turn 1. Next, same thing as Fossil Dino, but a bit different. Um, or same thing as Banisher. Fossil Dino, um, he's also a Wrecking Ball in this format. You know, you summon him, no special summoning. Your opponent, a lot of people just cannot answer this card. You play this card. And it's just like their worst nightmare. <clears throat> they have no response. Next, I run 2DD Warrior Lady. Or 2DD Warrior, sorry. 2DD Warrior. Um, DD Warrior is good because when they beat over him, or I just attack him into the defense, posi defense position monster, he removes them automatically. So, you know, it, it forces them to lose the monster no matter what. And then I run 1DD Warrior Lady. Um, optional removing effect. Um, I like the setup of 2DD Warrior and 1DD Warrior Lady. Um, a lot of times I'll summon her first game, and they'll keep all their bottomless and stuff in, and the second game I'll start summoning these, and their bottomless are completely dead. So by doing that, I eliminate a lot of their cards. And lastly is 1 She and the Squire. Now, a lot of people are like, why do you run that? Well, if you look at this lineup... What do these all have in common? They're warrior. But what else? Four stars. One star. I can synchro for Xi'an with these with these cards. So if I put a uh, DD warrior on defense mode and my opponent decides not to attack and sets a face down monster, I can then flip it, normal summon the Xi'an squire, and synchro into a Xi'an. Or I can monster reborn one of their four star samurais from their graveyard. Normal summon the Xi'an Squire and then synchro to Xi'an. So it gives me it gives me the option of summoning Xi'an, which an anti meta deck that can summon Xi'an is really dangerous. I've won so many games against Samurai by doing that. Um, that's the monster count. There is 16 monsters. It's pretty good for what the deck is. It's a 45 card deck, so 16 monsters works out very nicely. Um, we're gonna move on to the spells next. So I'll go ahead and show you those. First, we have one Book of Moon. A very good anti synchro. Um, if they attack me, I book them. You know, they have a really big monster, I book it, normal to cross out it, stuff like that. Card I just mentioned, normal to cross out. This card wrecks during this format. A lot of decks try and hide in defense with spies and jujus and glow bulbs and dandelions, and the list goes on and on. And normal to cross out not only gets rid of that monster, but it removes it, which can, like, normal to cross out a dandelion can be instrumental for winning, or a Raikou. Nextly, two fissure, um, two fissure for monster removal off the field, and just general destruction. Following that, two smashing ground, followed by dark hole, Monster Reborn. But they're all staples, so I really don't go over them very much. And then lastly, I play 3 Shrink. Shrink is good for making really big monsters, small monsters, and letting me run right over them without any complications. Um, it gives me good outs to Stardust, Scrap Dragon, stuff like that. We're going to move on to the traps now. I run 1 Royal Oppression. 
I run two bottomless. These are just pretty much staples still. One solemn judgment. Now this is kind of staple but not staple. Three compulsory. I like this card because it can get rid of any monster. Face up, face down, it doesn't matter. I can just get rid of it. If I don't want it there, it won't stay there. That's what I love about it. Dimensional Prison, staple, three of it. Mirror Force, staple. Torrential Tribute, staple. And then two more cards, or four more cards, but two different types of cards. First one is Widespread Ruin. This is not a staple. Um, the reason I run this is it's able to get over cards and say, this card cannot be targeted. And that means this card can get over um, Obelisk of Tormentor, which, believe me, or, believe me, it's kind of retarded, but sometimes you run into decks that play that like some gay-ass monarch deck. I've actually had to run into it. But mostly this is for Thought Ruler. Thought Ruler really kills me. 90% of my cards target, so if they play a Thought Ruler, I'm in a really bad situation, so Widespread Ruin can really save me. But it has other uses, too. You know, you can get rid of Obelisk and other stuff. And Titanium, you know. Titanium can't stop because it doesn't target. And lastly, one Starlight Road. Starlight Road is good. A lot of people think this is a trash card right now. It is not a trash card. It is a good card right now because, you, to be honest, there's a lot of cards that destroy multiple cards. You've got Malevolent Catastrophe, Mirror Force, Torrential Tribute, Dark Hole, uh, Chain Whirlwind. Um, you know, there's a lot of cards that destroy multiple cards right now. So this actually does work. Like, a lot of times when I draw it, it saves me because I'll... I'll summon a gadget, and I'm going to get a gadget on the field, no torrential, and I'll just Starlight Road for a free Stardust, so. It's very nice. Um, I'm not going to go over the extra deck. My extra deck is pretty much the same as everyone else's. I don't run anything different. It's got Stardust, and Tatastor, and Sheehan, and all that good stuff. All the random crap. Um, I'm going to go over the um, side deck now. Starting with Monsters, we've got two Barrier Statue of the Inferno. This says no monsters can be special summoned except for fire monsters. This is amazing because it kills special summon decks. It basically gives me five banishers in game two and game three if they are really special summon heavy. Um, nextly, three penguin soldier. Just ridiculous. Its effect is broken. It just against samurai, Karakuri, It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what you have. I just get rid of it off the field. Nextly, for versus samurai, one kinetic soldier. Um, he's good, but they sell him warning him all the time, so much for a penguin soldier. Two MST for skill drain, decree, malefic, dragoonities, any card any deck that uses field cards and continuous. Two shield crush for really defensive decks like Gravekeeper and um, Samurai. Believe it or not, when you start pressuring samurai, they go to defense really bad. They like just start setting non stop. Um to intercept for any monarch variants I might run into, because I like taking their monarchs and their lads. That's that's always cool. One pulling the rug in case I run into a magna or a monarch. And the reason I do this setup, a lot of people ask why ask why I don't just run three pulling. Well, this is good against magna and whatever. But if I'm playing with some monarch deck, I'll slide all three of these in. But I'm much rather take their monster than kill it, because if I take their monster, it's more beat power I have. But if I kill it. I mean, I'm just still just beating with my normal gadgets. By taking their monster, I can either force their face down cards they don't want to use yet, or do lots of damage. One Transmigration Prophecy for those really grave heavy decks again. Those are really staple right now. The Tango Synchros and everything else. The TD Control as well. And lastly, one Mind Crush because against Elemental Hero decks and TG decks, this card wrecks. Um, it used to be in the main deck, but it got taken out for Charlotte Road. Uh, I do want Minecraft back in the main deck, but for right now, it's doing very good in the side deck. Um, like I said, this deck is doing very well. Um, so I have four losses, so... Yeah, that's my um, deck, and that's my video for the video swap that I'm doing with uh, um, Ho um, Hokage the Sand 1, I think. Yeah. So this is the Gadget Guru, and I'll catch you all later.